Sir, my name is Alexander Osei from Ghana. All right, our previous lecture we ended with savings function. Today we are going to start with the savings curve, right? Good. Now we have seen that the savings function is equal to x equal to minus a plus a minus b. And the a minus b, you have seen that it represents the marginal propensity to save. The change that will occur in savings when income changes. I hope it makes sense. So we, we can say that let 1 minus b um, equal to s. So rewriting the saving function, you get s equal to minus a plus x y. So this is a savings function, right? Good. Now the savings curve, it is the diagrammatical or graphical representation of the savings function, right? Good. So this is how the savings curve is going to be. The savings curve is going to be like this. Here is my 45 degrees line. 45 degrees line. But look at it. The, micro, the autonomous savings over here is negative. The autonomous savings over here is negative. So it is not going to be here like the consumption curve. It is going to come to the negative zone. This is the Cartesian plane, right? Good. So it will come to the negative zone somewhere here, negative A, right? So if you are drawing it, let it cut the 45 degrees line. To be like this, it will cut it here. So this is our savings curve. S equal to negative A plus X, Y. This is our savings curve. It starts from here to here. And it cuts the 45 degrees line here. Here is our income. And here is aggregate demand or aggregate expenditure. Cha! Now, our next lecture is marginal propensity to consume and the average propensity to consume. Marginal propensity to save and the average propensity to save. Once again, my name is Alexander. Say bye bye.